fellowship with God is preferable to estrangement. The Bible teaches us that God does not change. Malachi 3 verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. There is also a way of God that is not changed since creation. Fellowship in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 verses 8 and 9. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? We note in this narrative two things that have not changed in time. One, God seeking fellowship with man. Two, man running away from fellowship with God. Let us, as children of the Most High, remind ourselves of the importance of fellowship with God in our lives. In some places, this is referred to as divine presence. In some places, this is known as nearness to God. May scriptures explain and allow us to understand this phenomenon. Fellowship, found in spiritual assembling. Matthew 18 verses 19 and 20. Again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Fellowship, found in the communion of saints. Luke 24 verse 15. That same day, two other disciples, not of the eleven, are traveling the seven miles from Jerusalem to Omas. As they walk along, they talk back and forth about all that has transpired during the recent days. While they're talking, discussing, and conversing, Jesus catches up to them and begins walking with them, but for some reason, they don't recognize him. Jesus says, you seem deeply engrossed in conversation. What are you talking about as you walk along this road? They stop walking and just stand there looking sad. One of them, Cleopas is his name, speaks up. You must be the only visitor in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about what's going on over the last few days. Jesus says, what are you talking about? The two disciples say, it's all about the man called Jesus of Nazareth. He was a mighty prophet who did amazing miracles and preached powerful messages in the sight of God and everyone around. Our chief priests and authorities handed him over to be executed, crucified in fact. Some women in our group really shocked us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't see his body anywhere. They came back and told us that they did see something, a vision of heavenly messengers, and these messengers said Jesus was alive. Some people in our group went to go check the tomb out, and just as the woman said, it was empty, but they didn't see Jesus. Jesus said, come on, men, why are you being so foolish? Why are your hearts so sluggish when it comes to believing what the prophets have been saying all along? Didn't it have to be this way? Didn't the anointed one have to experience these sufferings in order to come to his glory? Then he begins with Moses and continues prophet by prophet explaining the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures, showing how they were talking about the very things that had happened to Jesus. About this time, they're nearing their destination. Jesus keeps walking ahead as if he has no plans to stop there, but they convince him to join them. The two disciples say, please be our guest, it's getting late and soon it'll be too dark to walk. So he accompanies them to their home. When they sit down at the table for dinner, he takes the bread in his hands and he gives thanks for it. And then he breaks the bread and hands it to them. At that instant, two things happen simultaneously. Their eyes are suddenly opened so they recognize him and he instantly vanishes, just disappears before their eyes. The two disciples talking to each other say, Amazing! Weren't our hearts on fire within us while he was talking to us on the road? Didn't you feel it all coming clear as he explained the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures? Fellowship warms the hearts of believers. Luke 24, 32. Stunned, they looked at each other and said, Why didn't we recognize it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. Fellowship leaves impressions upon their lives. Acts 4 verses 12 through 16. This Jesus is the stone that you, the builders, have rejected, and now he has become the cornerstone. There is no one else who has the power to save us. 
For there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation, the name of Jesus. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who had never had religious training. Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with them. Standing there with them was the healed man, and there was nothing further they could say. So they ordered them to leave the room while they discussed the matter. Among themselves they said, what should we do with these men? As believers are called to this fellowship. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is forever faithful and can be trusted to do this in you, for he has invited you to co-share the life of his Son, Jesus, the Anointed One, our King. Fellowship. 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 Brothers and sisters with God, let us evaluate and consider the other kinds of fellowships. Fellowship with Jesus makes us like him. Fellowship with other things makes us like them. The Bible tells us this. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who had never had religious training. Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. May the Lord give us grace to hunger for fellowship for the one who is faithful. Psalms 119 verse 90 Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. Jesus summarizes all this in John 15 verse 4. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. A branch cannot bear fruit if it is disconnected from the vine, and neither will you if you are not connected to me. Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. Leviticus 26 verse 12 I will walk among you and be your God, and you will be my people. I will make my home with them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face towards you and gives you peace. God bless you.